Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a breakdown on the product that pretty much severed all ties between Konami and Upper Deck. This is called the Dual King 2. What we're going to be talking about is the product itself, the cards that you can get out of there, as well as the booster packs. So to start things off, if you're not aware, Upper Deck was in charge of the distribution of Yu-Gi-Oh product from 2002 up until 2008. This product right here was distributed by another company called Vintage Sports Cards. Konami doesn't really have a problem with repackaged products. In fact, they've been repackaging since LOB. This blist pack right here is first edition and you can see it's repackaged by the same company that did this product right here. What they were pissed off about is the fake cards. Upper Deck got a hold of the templates and they decided to print their own. I honestly have no idea why they would take actions like this. They were in charge of hosting all the tournament events. That's why you got all these badass trophies. If you want to see a video on that, you can click right here. So Duel King 2 was released by Vintage Sports Cards, but it has some authentic Konami product as well as some counterfeits. The authentic parts are the booster packs. The packs on the inside are 100% legitimate. However, the promos or whatever you want to call them are counterfeit cards. They are absolutely fake cards and they were not authorized nor were they printed by Konami themselves. Each Duel King has three booster packs as well as three promo cards. Both of them are literally glued and taped on a piece of cardboard and thrown in this carton right here. It's kind of crazy. Like you can tell right away that this is a fake product as soon as you open it. In terms of the quote unquote promo cards, there are two ultimate rares, Elemental Hero Flame Wingman and Elemental Hero Aqua Neos. There's an ultra rare Destiny Hero Dreadmaster, a super rare Water Dragon, as well as five rares. Elemental Hero Mudball Man, Elemental Hero Electrum, Whitehorn Dragon, Mist Body, and finally, the Flute of Summoning Karibo. Because these packs are authentic, this product itself has a lot of value now. Never mind being a historic piece. Lighted Destruction is like a $100 pack, Gladiator's Assault is 80 bucks, and then Dark Beginning 2 is at least like $20, $30. So it's quite common that you'll see these go for around the $250 mark because, I mean, they have... <laughs> <laughs> actually quality packs on the inside so product aside let's get on to the cards themselves i think the main and biggest offender on the Yu-Gi-Oh card market is actually the flame wingman right here this flame wingman was released in the dual king 2 the best way to be able to know if yours is a counterfeit is by looking at the stamp right here you're gonna see that the stamp is silver in the Yu-Gi-Oh tcg First edition as well as limited edition cards all have gold stamps at the bottom right. This as well as every other card in the Duel King 2 will all have silver stamps. The reason that these counterfeits have such infamy to them is because they actually look a lot better than other counterfeits. Like there is nothing on the market today that is similar in quality and that's why you know people pay so much and they never realize that oh i have an actual counterfeit card don't get it twisted though that the emboss is absolutely spectacular it's actually better than the north american the north american looks <laughs> significantly worse i would actually say that the emboss level is very similar to the european copies however you can tell by the color of the european that it just looks a little bit better than the counterfeit right here Again, you're going to see that the stamp right here is gold while on the counterfeit it is silver. So comparing the three examples right here of all three types of wingmans, you're going to see that the North American has pretty much little to no texture to the picture while the UDE one has a lot more. And then the European one has just like these circle textures as well to them. So you're going to see right here, for example, that this spot right here is empty while on the European one it is textured as well. So European has both the straight lines as well as the circle textures while this one only has the straight lines. Both Flame Wingman and Aqua Neos look just a little bit more 
counterfeity <laughs> compared to their authentic counterparts so that's the flame wingman and aqua neos next up we're gonna go into the ultra rares as well as the super rares i mean this this pretty much applies to everything else that this product has this one you can see a little bit of a bigger difference the font is a little bit more bold it has a little bit more ink in it the color is just a little bit darker what's interesting about these guys as well as everything that is not an ultimate rare that came out of dual king 2 is the fact that the eye of anubis even though it's supposed to be gold it's actually rotated counterclockwise by 90 degrees i don't know why it's like this or like why isn't the ultimate rare like that as well but this is a common pattern that we've noticed on all of the cards that come out of dual king 2. what you'll also find is that psa will not grade these i had a lot of people message me hey how come it's because your card is this counterfeit specimen it is not an authentic card that was pulled out of lost millennium but that's not all that affects this product right here what's actually interesting is that konami released a set of promotional cards where they kind of wanted to redeem what happened with ude these are what's called ude redemption set so some unique aspects about this set is number one every single card is a rare every single one of them has the original set code so tlm-en35 however it has k at the end of it and this was the only set that has a letter that comes after the set number what's also interesting about this set is that for some reason they did not include mist body as well as flute of summoning karibo those two were left out in terms of price I would say that most of them are pretty much equal in scarcity. Flame Wingman goes for the most because obviously it's Flame Wingman. But for the most part, they range from like the $50 to $100 each. They are a little bit rare and they don't pop up as often as like counterfeits or any other regular promotional cards. So they do retain a lot of value. I definitely think that this is a great piece of history in terms of collectability. I also think that this is a great piece of history, even though it's not a really uh, Yu-Gi-Oh product. <laughs> One last thing that I want to touch on before we end this video is there are a couple of misprint cards out there that are silver stamped when they're supposed to be golden stamped. These include the special edition promos that come in Invasion of Chaos, as well as shadow of infinity first edition ultimate rares in european copies for some reason a lot of the first editions have silver stamps on them but they aren't very rare like so they, they go for around the same price but i wanted to let you guys know so that you don't think that your card is fake or something like that they are not associated with this product right here those are actual misprints and they were rectified later on in the print run one misconception people have is that they misattribute the printing problems that happen in today's Yu-Gi-Oh to the separation between UDE and Konami. However, that's not the case. For example, if you look at SOVR, it looks quite a bit different than the sets that come after it and before it. So they were definitely experimenting, trying to probably cut down costs and it ended up sticking, right? <laughs> and that's things that I'm gonna be covering in another video. And you can see it actually progress as time went on. It got lower and lower and lower to what we have today, where it's like basically quality control issues galore. So yeah, that's my presentation on the Dual King 2, as well as the Notorious Flame Wingman. I highly recommend you guys pick up a set of these. These are very, very nice to have. In my opinion, I think they have a really nice historic place. And the fact that they are just like one small set means that they're very easy to collect. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. What I want to know from you guys is, do you guys think that PSA should grade these or should they not? I would love to know your opinions on that. Check the links in the description below if you're interested in supporting me. It gives me a small kickback anytime you purchase anything off of eBay at no cost to you. And with that, I'm going to be signing off. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.